Hi. It's an instructional video on how to use an Omega 35mm and medium format enlarger located within the black, basic black and white darkrooms here at Middle Tennessee State University. The enlarger itself is a very simple device. It's actually a light source on this neck that rides up and down. There's a bulb inside here, and the bulb forces light straight down to project onto a sheet of photo paper. And there's a couple of components, a couple of knobs and parts that go along with that. And I thought we'd go through all the details of everything, where they're located and what they do. The enlarger itself is a lamp in the very back. You never have to touch the lamp, but to turn it on and off, you have to use this thing called a timer. So we want to start to use a timer. And the timers are very simple things to use. There's a switch on the back side, turn it on. It should glow red, and that red light will not harm anything underneath the safe lights of the uh, dark room. Few switches, few dials. These two knobs control the amount or the length of time you wish to use. You can dial in anything from one second to 99 seconds. You could also use a one-tenth of a second switch if you wanted to get into really fine-tuned amounts. If uh, you needed 0 0.1 seconds, just kick it over with the one-tenth of a second switch and go from there. But we can dial in something easy to work with, such as 10 seconds. If I hit the start key, after 10 seconds, the enlarger will shut off. So right now, if there was a piece of uh, film in the enlarger and a sheet of photo paper, we'd be making a print. That uh, wonderful beep you hear is a signal to let you know that uh, the timer's finished. It's also a great way to make a, a lot of enemies in the dark room, especially if you maybe set it to metronome, uh, because it gets extremely annoying after every second. So maybe shut it to the off position, a polite way to work in the dark room with many other people. The few switches here, outlet time and outlet focus. The outlet time is whatever you have dialed in here. When you hit the start key, it comes on and counts down. If you set it to outlet focus, it'll just turn the enlarger on, and then when you hit it again, it'll turn it off. So it stays on for however long you need it to for focusing or manipulating some things on the enlarger. So you don't have to keep dialing in 99 seconds and starting it over and over again. Turn it back off, and it's ready to go when you hit the start key. This other sort of panel is the intensity of the uh, light. For the materials that we're working with, this red light will not harm anything. Some photographic processes uh, need it to be completely dark, so there's a dim setting and also completely off. Even though the display is off, the timer still keeps working, and you can keep using it like that. If you ever accidentally hit that, you think maybe the timer got shut off or so, just come back, hit this switch, and you can see that it's still working and plugged in. We'll just set it to 10 seconds for a demonstration and everything. Once you turn the timer on, the enlarger light comes on. That's a good thing. That's what we want. So let's turn that off. On the enlarger, there's a lock feature right back here. If I undo this knob, it allows me to raise and lower the enlarger head. This controls the amount of the projection or how large or small of an enlargement I can make. I can bring it all the way up to make a print that's about 16 by 20 or 20 by 24, no problem, or bring it down to make something around 4 by 5 inches. When I get it to the position I want it in, I lock it down. Just thumb tight. It doesn't have to be super tight. And that way it doesn't wander or accidentally move on me and I have to start all over. There are two black knobs right here that are knurled, meaning that they're easy to grab onto and they're linked together. They're identical. Either side, left or right, they do the same thing. It adjusts the focus. And the focus is just by turning this area there's an accordion-style bellows located right here. And when you throw that, it raises and lowers this lens. The lens is available for checkout from the photo crib here. And they usually are already attached to the enlarger to make things easier. Right now, there's no lens on the enlarger. This is exactly what it looks like, just a lens with apertures. It just couples right to the base of the enlarger. You lock it on, and it's ready to go. On the other side of the enlarger, there's this uh, switch, almost looks like a pinball machine flipper with this little lever. It's the uh, negative carrier sort of open and close. And what that does, I don't know how well you can see it in the video, but uh, right here, this part of the enlarger opens up to accept a device called a negative carrier. And that's what holds the film. This piece in place, and then closes down, closes off the enlarger. This is an uh, important uh, component to the printing process because if you accidentally forget to leave that open, light will spill out of the enlarger and it could potentially fog other people's materials that are working with. When working with this device, 
you need something to put in it. And that's where the film comes in. To load film into the enlarger, grab the negative carrier. Make sure you lift up on this lever, pull out this piece, and open it up. It's just two pieces of metal. The idea behind this is that it sandwiches the film into this uh, metal cradle so it allows you to easily make a print from it. Select the frame of film that you wish to use, load it into the negative carrier, hold it so it doesn't move away, close it down making sure it doesn't pinch or scratch, get it into position, and this piece loads into the mouth part of the enlarger. And then just remember to close this down to prevent light from spilling out. There's an easel, just like uh, an easel in painting. You load up a canvas onto it or a sheet of photo paper. This piece opens up. You lay the paper inside of it, close it down, and have it in place. A focusing scope to test the focus, to double check to make sure you're right on with the focusing spot. A rocket blower for dusting film, uh, making sure that it, everything is clean and dust free. And then last, where all the magic begins, a box of photo paper. This is a paper product by Ilford and it's light sensitive material, so you never want to open it under lights like this. It has to be under that sort of muted orange safe light. Uh, but we'll go ahead and open that up here just in a moment uh, so you can see the photo paper. We'll load it into the easel and get the negative going and start making a print.